Pops in the Rican. Pops in the Rican. Pops and the Rican. Pops and the Rican. Pops and the Rican. Pops and the Rican. <laughs> yeah, buddy. It's the Pops and the Rican show. Yeah. What's up, man? Ooh, I tell you, here what, we are. We are. We're having way too much fun. I think we're having a little bit too much fun now. Now that I we're mean, set up here, I mean. <laughs> I, there are people that I know that are quarantined, and they're like, "This yeah. isn't—we're having way too much fun." Yeah, that's bro, it's, that's what's but, up. Yeah, Me but, too. We need to do this because it's driving us crazy, bro. It's driving yeah. us crazy. So, uh, hey, uh, do we? Should we go do the the, the traditional? Go hey, right uh, in it, baby. look, yeah, everybody. Uh, I, I'm Pops, and I'm the Rican, and that makes this the. Pops in the Rican Pops show. Rican show. Ooh, yeah. So uh, special effects. Anyway, uh, first of all, I think we should start off by saying, uh, if for those of you who might have missed uh, our last uh, show that we did with uh, Dennis Glaxiola. Yep. You uh, put that L before it's Glaxiola. Uh, yeah. Well, you know. <laughs> Glaxiola. No. Bro. What? What am I saying? I'm. I'm. Uh, I'm pathetic. Let's just be. Glaxiola. Honest. Yeah, what's Let's up? be honest. Right, right. Uh, but anyway, uh, we showed a clip of yeah. of Dennis doing his his comedy, yeah. funny things, uh, and then uh, the company that that actually recorded that and, and has the rights to it. Uh, they shut it down. We're learning because this. yeah, because we didn't we didn't realize we didn't that rights to it. Yeah, and all that. Yeah. yeah. So if you go to to watch that episode, it's going to say, you know, that uh, stars, I think it was, uh, yeah. said, uh, no, you can't watch this because, you know, they're, they're not rich enough. <laughs> and uh, anyway, and, and so we're going to get Dennis back on. So we can yeah, have, we'll definitely so have people have on. a chance to hear what, you know, what's going on with him and, and all the stuff about his comedy and all that. But, so I wanted to make sure and mention that, that, uh, yeah, our operations manager. I won't say who that is, but he's an old guy, and and he should have he should have known. Once again, he should have known better. That's all I'm saying. Once again, he's and, messing uh, around, and here we go. We're we're going through this again, but it's something. evidently they don't know who Pops is, no, and they, they didn't uh, know. they'd have been like, "Oh, that's yeah, we'll go ahead and let him do that." You know? Yeah, cool. exactly, exactly. But so anyway. Uh, I apologize but, for uh, for the failure of the old person that was supposed to have checked that out. He's an idiot. And oh man, that guy! That guy's got to go somewhere. No, he's all good. <laughs> he's all good, man. So, anyway, uh, another thing that I wanted to bring up right off the right off the top of the show was, yeah. uh, you know, th we are getting close to hitting a a a milestone, I guess you can say, of su subscribers here yeah. on our channel. Yes. And uh, and the way YouTube operates, they've got different plateaus where when you get to a certain number of subscribers, they give you something like a little, a little attaboy, you know? Yeah. And yep. uh, it allows you to customize things. Yeah. And I think uh, when we get to 100 subscribers, we get – one of those, you know, and then when you get to a thousand subscribers, another thing. And so, uh, please, by all means, if, if you're watching, uh, any one of ours, uh, please hit the subscribe button and, uh, you know, let us know that, uh, you're following along, you know, and like, like Kyle Yamada. I will jumping on, man, and saying what's up. We appreciate the, the Yama, you, Kyle. The Yamada Yamada. Mr. Yamada. What's going anyway, on, man? Anyway, he's, looking, he's looking good, too. What can I say? Yeah, it's great. I, don't, I, I can't see him, so I know he's looking good. <laughs> That's the best I've ever seen him look. Right, right. He's looking <laughs> awesome, man. 
but you know, <laughs> so please, uh, by all means, subscribe to yeah. the the Gutties channel because it it helps us to get to the places where uh, we can uh, customize things and to get things looking even a little bit better and, and provide a better quality program for you. So. Right. And with Gutty's TV, we, we want we to start everything underneath pretty much the umbrella of Gutty's TV. Now we want to bring everything under there. So that way content is available for you. Uh, we want to great get those great interviews back online again and uh, speak to these comedians that have been running through and been going through um, not only what's happening now, but through the whole thing of comedy, keeping comedy alive, stand up comedy alive. And, um, and now that we've been able to be innovative with this online stuff, we're, we're set now to where we can bring in uh, some really great uh, interviews. And hopefully you guys will enjoy that. Also, you got to make sure that uh, we need to make sure that we tell everybody else that you can download our mobile app as well. Um, our mobile app is ready and available for you on Google Play and Apple Store. Um, you can actually um, uh make a donation to Gutty's Comedy Club as we are waiting, as we're seeing this uh, unfold before us. Um, as you can see, I'm here at the club by myself, um, social distancing to everybody else, but missing everybody and missing uh, missing out on so many laughters and, and laughs. And so we want you guys to know that we are so appreciative to every single person that has reached out so far to Gutty's. We love you. We appreciate yeah. you guys. Um, for real, you guys have reached out to us and we're so thankful uh, for all of you. So we're never going to stop uh, just mentioning this because we just do. We, we love you so much and we appreciate every single dollar that you have spent at Gutties and also in donations as well. Um, you can also jump on there on the app and buy merch. You can get Gutty gear online. You can support Gutties and also you can represent Gutty so you can get something back with your investment too as well. So we appreciate you uh, going online. You can do that too as well. And then you can always see the, the updated um, uh, Gutty's TV, uh, any specials and anything that's going on, uh, you can go on there too as well. And you can see what we're uh, posting. So we're going to be putting all of these videos up on there, all these interviews as we go along, as we're learning about this too as well. We want to make sure that we're under the right rules and guidelines of, of this song. But uh, what I like about it is the fact that we're able to connect effectively and innovatively uh, with everybody that we love and care. So thank you guys again for watching. Thank you for checking us out and thank you for liking and subscribing. So go online and do that. We'd appreciate it big time. Well, and that's, you know, that's the whole thing. We are doing everything we can. Uh, yeah. The world's closed for maintenance. They, everybody's got to go clean up their world. Uh, but once things get cleared and, you know, uh, Mother Nature says, okay, you guys, you know, go back to annoying me uh, and when, all that stuff. Then we can, you know, uh, we'll, yep. get back, we'll get back to doing the live we're shows. Back. But in the meantime, we're doing this. We're trying we're to bring in. you some, we're trying to bring you some, some great people in to, so you can hear, not, you're not going to hear them do comedy. Get their insights, right. We'll, we'll hear but, their insights on yeah. the backs, you know, backstage, almost like we the get green to, room. We get to learn about the them and yeah. and hear what's going on with them, hear what they've got coming up after COVID-19 gets done, you know. Yep. Uh, and, and hopefully, you know, we'll we'll uh, get enough of these people, you know, like our guest tonight. Maybe we'll convince uh, him to, uh, to help us buy – uh, the new version of a COVID 2020 uh, <laughs> because it is, that, that's I hear that's a much better version of COVID 19. I don't know. Is. There but, it is. Uh, All right, so, homie, let's go ahead and get this rolling, man. I'm yeah. excited, man. You guys are good. You're good. Um, I'm excited about this interview too as well. I've been waiting to to uh, connect with this guy for a minute. So uh, let's go ahead and bring him in. Are you ready for it, Dennis? Hey, I tell you what, you guys that <laughs> are are watching, you're in for a treat. Because this. this this guy is one of these. There there are certain comics that, from the first time I met them, they make me laugh. Every time I watch them, they make me laugh. Yeah. There's there's some that you know you see their stuff. You go, okay, that's really good. Yeah. But but but, uh, it's you but our, wait. Our, <laughs> our guest tonight is, yeah. he rocks the house everywhere yeah. he goes, yeah. and he's just a blast to hang out with. And so uh, welcome to the Pops and the Rican Show to our good friend. Cleto Rodriguez. Hey, Cleto, what's hey, up, guys, man? How's it going? Good, how man. How y'all doing? 
We could. How you doing, man? I'll tell you what, I'm about two seconds of running away, running away from my own home. <laughs> Everybody we talking to, bro, they wanna they wanna do something like they're like, I gotta get out of here. I am dying. I hear you, man. I'm 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 glad to be able to to escape for a second and come to the club and be like, babe, I'm gonna be at the club. So uh I'll be back. Yeah. So I, I, at least I'm by myself. I'm I'm social distancing, but at the same time I'm away from everybody. And I'm like, oh, this feels good. This feels really good. Uh, yeah, I tell you what, my wife's been outside. She started to camp out like for two weeks ago. I haven't seen her since. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> She's been in the tent. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's up, up, man. I'm glad that you're on the show, man. Thanks for coming out, man. I appreciate it, man. And and oh, take the time, bro. Finally, it. finally get to meet my boy Cleto, man. It's been a minute. Um, I guess I am a little, I'm a, I'm a fan, I'm a huge fan since the since the get-go. When I first started doing comedy i was like i felt like man i'm i'm doing clean comedy and i feel by myself and when it first started launching there at the time it was uh tim hawkins and you and um uh it, the names escaped me but mainly because of the fact that i could relate so much with your work um it was always like man okay cool now i know this is this is something real this is not something that i'm just trying to come up with so i appreciate your skill, your gift and talent, man, and I'm glad that uh, we're able to connect too as well. So, yeah, that's that's my uh, that's my thanks. Appreciate it, man. Yeah, no problem. Cool, <laughs> man. Yeah, so I'm glad you're surviving. We're surviving, and uh, we're here. So, what I wanted to do is just jump in and just start talking about a couple things. Uh, what we like to do in, in the, on the show is that we also have followers that are just new to comedy, and um, and these guys have been uh, at the club at Gutty's, at our open mics and everything, and and they're always looking for ways to be able to get better. And that's that's how it works in our community as as comics, as we we can sharpen each other up uh, with this skill. So I wanted to just go ahead and just get this out the way. I know this question has probably been asked so many times to you, but how did you get your start in comedy? How did you know that this is what I want to do? Well. I knew I, I, I wanted to be a stand-up comic when mariachi school didn't work out. And, hey. um, <laughs> you know, they just, what they did, just didn't what did you want to play? Did you, did you want to play the, which, I, the chiquito? Well, I wanted the to play the big guitar. I wanted yeah, to play yeah. the big guitar, but you got to be really, like, pretty big to play the big guitar. <laughs> you know, it's funny, though. Like, even the littlest one plays the big guitar, and the little the biggest one plays the little guitar. So, uh, <laughs> no, actually... <laughs> Actually, no, I uh, I started doing stand-up about, let's see, 22 years ago. I uh, I knew growing up, I was always a center of attention in my family and just kind of making them laugh and that kind of thing. And then um, I was always the class clown in school. And, uh, you know, it was one of those things that I just, I found that I could make people laugh. That's and they had the um, Latino Laugh Festival here in San Antonio. And my family just like, you know, hey, you should go do that. Go try it out. And I'm like, eh, you know, I was still kind of worried about how I would do. And I was a little bit hesitant. And then I made it a goal for myself that if it comes out, because they're going to make it an annually thing. And back then it was like Paul Rodriguez and um, uh, Cheech Marin and Daisy Fuentes were the host. And then they had guys up back then like Carlos Mencia and like G George Lopez and all these guys that were really coming up at the time. And uh, I decided, well, you know, I made it a goal to come out and do uh, stand up. And uh, I remember I did my first open mic and, oh, man, it was awesome. I had all my friends there, my family there. Um, but back then, I was a dirty, filthy comic. Okay. I mean, I was just, yeah, uh -huh. I was a dirty, filthy comic. And okay. everything but, changed. Um, yeah. So when you did, I didn't mean Go to ahead. cut you off, but when you did your open mic did you how did it go was it an awesome experience you did great right I or was it really just good because i had family and friends there so yeah. they were gonna laugh at it if i said the word duh, they were gonna laugh right. at it regardless they were just That's excited true. that somebody they knew was a comedian so it was a little stage in front of the main club outside of the main club in the little lobby area and uh i remember i had everybody just rolling and then I got bit by the bug, you know? It's like everybody was like, man, laughing. I was hooked. The following week, I took nobody, and I had a, a, it was in a mall. I'll never forget. And there was a movie theater right across from the mall. 
So they had a couple from Rhode Island waiting to get their ticket stamped for the parking and another couple from Green Bay that was waiting for their movie to start. And uh, none of them knew what a Mexican wedding was. And I just went, crash and burn, crash and burn. You gotta, you gotta love yeah. that. You, you get that, you get that big high from the first time you're out. Oh, that was great. I'm gonna be great every time. What? Yep. Reality yeah, yeah. Wow, smacks you in the face. Who stole, who stole oh, I, all I the laughs? I, the tonight yeah. show. Uh, I thought I was going to be on the Tonight Show in two weeks. Oh, Bro. it was crazy. <laughs> I was like, yeah, yeah. like, after a week, you already got your website up. You got business cards. Oh, yeah. like, <laughs> I had a DVD release party ready. I mean, I had everything yeah, yeah. going. I mean, yeah, I was just man. pumped up. And, it's a, uh, it's it was a, a marathon. Really <laughs> it is, yeah. You know, it's, it, like, it's, like when you, it, it's like when you play golf. I don't know if you play golf as well. You get that yes. one, you, you hit like you shank every other one, but you get that one good drive down the fairway and you're like, oh, I'm in. I'm in. Yes. I can do this. Like, I can do that the rest <laughs> of the day. Yeah, you're like, bro, I'm, I got this. Sign me up for drive. the Masters. I'm ready for the Masters. Here we go. Yeah, you're <laughs> what? Good over, Tiger. Good over, right. Tiger. I'm coming. Exactly. Good over. Bro. Exactly. I got you. That's crazy, man. It's exactly like that, man. Because you get, you have that in your head. You're like, man, I could do this. And then what's crazy is, and, 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 um, you know, not to blame them, but your, your, your friends and your family, they're like your majors, especially if like your moms and everybody believes in you. They're like, oh, oh you're yeah. funny. And they'll support you. And they'll yeah. tell you, go, mijo. Do you, do you, yes, go up yeah, there yeah. and do it. And then when you get up there, you don't realize I need jokes. <laughs> yeah. I, I thought I had 30 minutes yeah. and I got two, like two really uh -huh. solid minutes. And when you see that your set yeah. goes down and dwindles and dwindles, man, that's when anxiety starts going in. And you're like, I don't know if I can oh, do yeah. this. Because that, so, I mean, uh -huh, but that's the reality uh -huh. of it. But then when you go at it and you you know that if I can get at this and start chopping at this, I know I have the goods to be able to bring it in. Because it's all about that presentation. If you're, do, if you're good at presentation yeah. and you're good at setting it up, then it's a matter of getting your set. It's a matter of writing it out and getting it right so that when you speak in it, it's natural. Yep. And you're able to go, okay, yeah. I can make that work. So and that's ask, when you know it. Let yeah. me ask you this, Cleto. When you you had your first show and then you went back and, and you kind of bit at the second show, um, what, yeah. did you, what did you do or how did you get to the place where you realized, okay, I've got to put some work in, but who helped you understand how to put the work in? Where, who yeah. helped you? What, what helped you? Not necessarily who, but what helped you in those early days to learn that you have to I think, have more than just. You know, just it's like they say when you when you, you have. Yeah. Yeah, I think when you when you have a passion for something like you get. I mean, I literally got bit by the applause. I got bit okay. by the laughter, and I was hooked. And I realized that that right then and there, regardless how after that 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 set went, the second one. When I bombed, it was good. It was probably the best thing that could have happened for me because then I became mm -hmm. a student of comedy. I became That's a it. student and I studied stand up. I mean, I grew up with Pryor and Eddie yep. Murphy and yep. you know Sinbad, Cosby, uh, Carlin, you know all these guys. But when I um, started becoming a student of it, I studied everything from Chaplin all the way to like John Stewart. You know, I mean, I was just okay. studying and just trying to find. Okay, what their this is their niche. What's mine? What's my voice? What is it gonna be? Because I didn't want to sound like anybody, I didn't want to be like anybody, but I know that you know, I, I wouldn't watch comics for the fact that I didn't want to I didn't want to get any of their bits and I didn't want to get confused or right. is that my bit or is that someone else's bit? <laughs> right, you know? yeah, right. So I did right. I, I threw it away and just started writing premises and and some would stick, some wouldn't, and uh but for myself, it's just, you know, it was one of those things that, um, you know, as far as who helped me, it would it would definitely be, uh, I remember when I started studying uh, comics like Bob Hope, you know, and I started seeing the, not only just stand-up comedy, but the personality that would be on stage. And then all of a sudden I became, I had more of a passion to want to be an entertainer, mm. performer, build on stand-up, you know, and then I saw... Rodney Dangerfield, who was like, is like probably my favorite comic of all time. Mm -hmm. And uh, hey, you get no respect. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No but he started in vaudeville. You know? didn't he? Yeah, he did. He started in vaudeville. He started in vaudeville. And, and his, his dad was in vaudeville. Yeah, he was, uh, 
I saw his story um, and his, uh, you know, his documentary, and it was just amazing just to see how he started pretty much stand up when he was in his 40s. Yeah, yeah. Which yep. was like, you know, Super, okay, yep. I started when I was 24. So, right, right. <laughs> right, right. Right. That's wild, man, how it all starts. Everybody has their uh, entry, as, as you want to say. Like, OK, you got yeah. some people who started really early and got like connections really quick. Like I, some interviews that we've had so far, people were like, yeah, I met Jamie Foxx uh, two years in. And I'm like, man, how do you how did that happen? Does everybody has a way of getting in? Um, and so, like, I, I get what you're saying. Like for me watching what helped me was uh jack benny jack benny and his his way to be oh, able yeah. to um his embrace of the science is what i was learning like how he would just with a face and he'll go like that just just his simple yeah. little you know gesture and his silence was like he mastered that and i'm like that right there is yep. huge and to be able to know what it's like to um be able to transform your joke when it doesn't really hit hard is another thing that you got to learn when you're going out there where it's like, okay, how can I take this joke and make it universal? And that's always going to be the, the the challenge is being able to make it universal. So that way, wherever you go, that joke will hit. And that is something, man, that's, that takes time. So that's really cool. If it, if it, if it's relatable, you know, I mean, you talk about, you know, uh, just the facial expressions. I mean, I don't know if you can see it or not. I'll, I'll kind of, well, let me see if I can move it over here. Where's it at? There's that mirror. There's a mirror right yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and I yeah. use that mirror right there. I put that up and I practice my jokes. I got a board over here. I don't know if you can see that. I got a board yep. with different premises on it. And I just kind of move them around. And, uh, you know, I have like mom, dad, you know, yeah. uh, news and all this other stuff that I talk about. <laughs> And I use this mirror as a to see my facial expression because sometimes the punchline is an expression, the punchline right. is a face, the punchline, right. and and pretty much I, I tell young comics and whoever's you know watching now, it's like uh, that whole stage is your office. Use the whole stage, use everything you got. I mean, yep. if you have a prop that's back, we had this comedy club I was performing at, and they had these long metal strings like like beads coming down and i remember i got behind them and i i, I put them on in front of my face and like they call me long shanks you know and it was kind of like <laughs> right you know, you know you do, That's what's you up, whatever right? you can and uh it's just everything is for the taking it's just um just what is it in your imagination what is it that, that you can make funny like you said and it's just constantly constantly writing and and uh i mean there was a there comes a time, I think, in your career where you think, oh, man, you find out you can do it like on, on a dime. You know, you can just yeah. see a premise. And go, OK, let me get the funny to it. And which was when I finally got to that place, which was last week. Yeah. Um, <laughs> exactly. I mean, let, me, let, me, let me tell you, it took a while because I'm like I, I am more of the performer than I am the writer. If I could hire a bunch of writers, like I would get so upset. I would see these like uh, these guys that would come out with their own shows and stuff, and they'd have their monologues. And then like my my wife would be like, "Man, they're really funny." I'm like, "Yeah, if I had 15 writers too, I'd be pretty funny too." You know, like, like oh, man, you know, That's I would true. be like, I wish I had like one writer. And uh, but it's it's just something that it has to fit you and yeah. that that person that is you want to have write with. Like I can write with other comics and I can bounce ideas with them, which is great. But it's just a matter of like if you had someone writing, they have to write for you. Like, what's your style? What's your right? What, you know, how are you going to relate it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's that, yeah, your voice. You got to yeah. be able to uh, tune in with that. So, I think part of it is the, and I say this to comics all the time: get out of your head mm. and get into the moment, yeah. because yeah. that's where when you when you can get into the moment and you're embracing what is real funny right then, right now great things happen but so often people get stuck in the back of their head they got, this, they, they got this little cave back that they're in the back of their head they're hanging out with you know uh, and they're having their yeah. own little conversations with the voices in their head yep. and, and then they're like i don't know if this is going to be funny or i'm not sure about this and, I, and instead of being no, in the my, moment my, 
My voices in my the, my the voices in my head have happy hour. That's how much they get together. Let me tell you. <laughs> yeah, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Get the was it Schlitz? The Schlitz. Funny, <laughs> funny you bring Schlitz up. Somebody was asking me the other day. They said, you know, what is it? They said uh, I I had posted on Facebook a while back. I said if you drank Schlitz and have eaten spam, you're good. <laughs> <laughs> you don't got to worry about the coronavirus. Solid... You're all right. <laughs> That'll you're clean you out, right? Good. Exactly. Your immune system yeah, is already I, ready. Your oh, immune for real. System is taken care of. You're all right. Don't worry <laughs> about it. Speaking, and speaking of the coronavirus, I mean, my I, <laughs> I got to apologize because right off the bat, my family obviously didn't get the memo on Easter that there was a virus going on. And <laughs> they partied like you would have thought. Yo. There was no, no, no. COVID, what? You know, I mean, they got together like 30, 40 tight. They called me. Are you coming over? No, I'm not coming over. Dude, where, <laughs> like, where have you been? I back, I back, 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 you're not coming over? I said, no. But like, all I got back was, come on, nobody has it here. <laughs> you, you were supposed to bring the baked beans. Oh, Get over here. That's always the case. I, I, yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. <laughs> We had you down for the potato salad, Cletha. What are you doing? <laughs> I mean, I told him. I said, I go. You can't go. I can't go over there. Y'all might have Corona. He goes, Yeah, we got Corona, Dos Equis. We got. <laughs> <laughs> we got the Schlitz, bro. We got Dos Equis. We got Coronas, man. Don't worry. About it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, that's great. Yeah, I apologize for them not practicing social distancing. I mean, I told them. Uh, the, I never. I, my, my uncle, he goes, "You're not coming." I go, "No." They got, you know. He, he, I go, "What about the corona?" Guy? Nobody has it here. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> that's it, man. Sometimes um, they just have no. Oh. Our family. Sometimes our families just to, don't have any clue. They're just like, ah, oh, whatever, you know. I see it. You know, it's like whatever, whatever. It was like it was doing so good until Easter. It was like no matter what, that thing was gonna stop them from barbecuing and getting together. They I were, mean, it was just Jesus, bro. They were doing it for Jesus. Yeah. We're, we're covered. Covered. Jesus. Yeah. We're doing it. They for even God. had a Jesus. They, they had a. They. I thought one time they were thinking about one. My aunt. I couldn't believe she said. I, I don't think she was making a joke. She literally said, "Mijo, do you know we can find." Uh, Jesus piñata for the kids. I'm like, what? <laughs> Are you that, kidding me? What is it going to look <laughs> like? Oh, man, that's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> do, you want, do you want the pre-crucifixion Jesus or the post-crucifixion Jesus? That's horrible. Exactly, that's horrible. exactly. Oh, my goodness. That's You're going to beat him. You're going to beat him. Like, oh, that's horrible. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> <that's laughs> Uh, they hit the piñata. Oh, no, I can't even. You know, I can't I mean, I'm, gonna... like, no, I'm not going to be a part of this. I'm not no, gonna we're going to have to settle with, we're gonna have to settle with the rabbit. Yeah, we're going to have to settle with the rabbit. That's it, you know. We have to reach There you go. You're going to have to go to a Muslim store to buy that one. Right, right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly, yeah. exactly right. So... So let me let me ask you this, uh, Cleta. When when it comes to your writing material, I mean, you showed us the behind you yeah, how you've huh? got the board of premises and all that. But what's your process when it comes to writing? I mean, are you one of these uh, pen to paper guys? You sit down at your computer, type well, it up. Yeah. What's what's your whole process for writing your your material? Just what I did right now. Yeah. Just yeah, with the, talk with it the, out. The thing, I talk it out and That's I throw it. it out there. And if you laugh, then I'm gonna write <laughs> it's going to write it out. It's going in. Exactly. So, That's good. so we're going to see I, we're going to see a Jesus pinata bit coming up soon at one of your shows. <laughs> well, you know what? It's so funny. I I didn't. She said that, but I didn't go anywhere with it because uh, with my family, they're real. You know, hey, you got, uh, yeah, you know, it's it's you know, a touchy business. one. Then you got John F. Kennedy, and then, <laughs> you know, and then you got Selena. Yeah, yeah, you know, the I just bro. don't mess with that. <laughs> That's right. You don't mess around with certain things in that culture, and uh, with my culture, it's like it's just they don't mess around with it. But I think for me, it's that's the process. If I get an idea or I get something like I think that's there's something that I think is funny. Yeah. Um, I'll go ahead and uh, 
like for instance, um, trying to think of what is some, one of the things that I'm working on. Uh, oh, you know, like friends of my dad, you know, I was talking to my, my kids doing Cub Scouts and I was telling him, I go, you know, son, you know, you've been, in, he was complaining. I said, you don't understand. You, you're hearing Cub Scouts. I go, do you understand? You're, you've been in Cub Scouts for three years. I was in Cub Scouts for three weeks. My dad told me, he said, uh, I said, dad, can I be in Cub Scouts? I don't have enough money for that. I go, well, yeah, Dad, it's free. And he goes, well, you're going to be in it until it's your turn to give, bring snacks. And that was it. I was third week. is my turn to bring snacks. And I couldn't, I couldn't be in the house no more. He told, me, he told me for the snacks. He goes, what do they take for snacks? I said, oranges, Dad, oranges slices. He goes, okay, here. Here's an orange and a knife. Don't be stingy. St- <laughs> nice <laughs> things like that. Uh, come so, on, man. So I, I did not take the orange. I said I forgot the snacks, and I, needless to say, yeah, I didn't. I, I didn't last in Cub Scouts. So but it's just, <laughs> I was only a wee blow for three weeks. I was a wee blow for three weeks. Very proud of that, right there, dude. Okay, so now, <laughs> now that you're a dad, you can see that was genius, right? You that was see, that very was much. Genius. Yeah. Now, like, now, now okay, you know, I see why you gave me that orange. Spam for, he's picking slice spam for Cub Scouts, you know. Like, you know, broaden the horizons, you know. Broaden the horizons. Let him know. Give a six pack of slits and, and some spam. <laughs> you know, you bring up slits. The last, I was telling uh, a friend of mine that every time in in the uh, when growing up, I remember my family's big cowboy fans, huge cowboy fans, Dallas cowboy fans. Okay. And we would watch the games every Sunday. We get to my grandma's house. We'd barbecue. We watch, and it was like a routine. We'd watch the Cowboys, and then afterwards, my fam, my uncles, and my dad would go play forty five records in the patio. Mm-hmm. Now, it always depends on if the Cowboys won, they were playing Motown. If the Cowboys lost, they were playing Freddie Fender, Wasted Days, and Wasted Nights over <laughs> and over and over. Again. So. I never forget when they lost one time. And Freddie came on. It was like clockwork. My dad just yells out, Miho, bring me a schlitz. And there it was, seven years old. <laughs> oh, good times right there. Good times. That's what's up, man. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that, was, that would be my process. I bounce it off people. I try it on people. And then if it if it hits or... I get a little eh, you know, then I'll work on it. I'll keep working on it. And yeah. um, so have you ever tried it out start, oh. in like clubs? You just take it, go to the club, go to open mic, or is it since you've been in the game for long enough, you know what will work and what won't work at least. And then you I try, try it, do you throw I, it in a set or what? I actually, I try it out on, on um, get togethers that I have with my family. I'll try it out with, friends that I meet with and then I'll try it out. Uh, like I, I work for the morning news station here in San Antonio and it's for the Fox yeah. affiliate and the NBC affiliate. And it's a little segment called where's Galeco. It's a, a man on the street kind of deal and they kind of yeah. lighten up the mood. And I, every place I go, I will try uh, a joke. You know, I'll try my material that I've been working on on them and they have no idea. And <laughs> if I'll find out if it works or not, and uh, I mean, it don't matter. I'll be in jury duty, and I'll still try it over there. It don't matter. <laughs> I'll be at a funeral, and I'll be like, "Hey guys, let me try this one," you know. And uh, you know, I bring up, I, I, I say that, and I think, I, and I don't know if this is like com- uh, every other comedian too, but you know, when it comes down, uh, um, I remember a, a, a friend of mine who's a college student was saying that she uh, did a paper and she came, she did a paper on, on uh, in her psychology class. And she comes back to me and she goes, she was a waitress and she goes, you know, Cleto, I found out you comedians are crazy. I said, what? <laughs> she goes, yeah, you comedians are crazy that y'all hide behind, you make fun of other people's misfortunes but, be, and then you hide behind your fears with comedy. Huh. And then I just started, you know, switching my head and stuff. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> oh, that's crazy. Why I didn't get that post office job. So, uh, you know, so, you know, she was telling me this. And and I remember, and I kind of, when I'm around funerals or anything serious, I always yeah. hide behind comedy. I find that out. But, like, when my mom passed, rest, rest in peace, when she passed about five years ago, they asked me to host the rosary, you know, the viewing. Okay. And uh, you would have thought if there was, I mean, people <laughs> – they asked the wrong person, first of all, to, to do this. And 
Because the, if my mom was going to go out, she was my biggest fan. She was going to go out with a laugh. I went up there, and my opening line was, hey, folks, I really want to thank you all for being here. And on and behalf of the family, thank you for being here. And uh, I just want to say that if um, if my mom owed you money, well, you came on the wrong day. <laughs> 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 I just turned around and looked at the coffin. <laughs> yeah, you came on the wrong day. You ain't getting up from there, and uh, you missed out. <laughs> yeah, that, that shit failed. So I wind up telling stories about my mom. Had people crying, wow, rolling. Dude. And I had, they would come up to me and pay their condolences to the family. And I had all my friends and family come up to me like, bro, if I would have known you were going to do a show, I would have brought more people. I had one I had a one one comedian friend that came that night and he goes, Bro, are you selling merch? Do you need help? I mean uh <laughs> yeah. I think I have a bit of casket too. Merch? <laughs> is it a is it a bad thing? You're starting the funeral out. Hey uh, everybody just want you to know it's a two drink minimum. Two drink <laughs> <laughs> we gotta make the money somehow. <laughs> and if you don't mind, I'll be passing the tip jar now. <laughs> I got my CDs, DVDs in the back of my T-shirts. That's right. In the Check back the of my truck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. And I'll be at Uncle <laughs> Phil's. I mean, yeah, I'll be, I'll be at Uncle Phil's funeral had, next week. I, I had you know. people come up to me and ask me if I would do their family's funeral. That's awesome. I, said, I don't know who your family. Is. Well, think about it. I mean, but, think about it. The know, dynamic is huge, man. Because you, I mean, everybody's going in with with one. It, talk about a punchline. I mean, everybody's yeah. going in with one idea, one specific thing, and when you're coming across a set, you're going to hit them hard. That's a it, the dynamic is right, right there, and yeah, it's, a, it's an unfortunate thing. But I'm just saying, what a huge dynamic because of the fact that they're so focused on one thing, and when you're swinging on the other end, it's 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 it's, it's going to make them laugh because of the fact that the dynamic is so is so thick there. Absolutely, that's awesome, man. Yep. <laughs> That's so, crazy. So then, let me uh, let me throw this at you then with with where you have come in your comedy career. Um, I mean, you've you've worked with some pretty amazing comics. You know, you've got a, a yeah. history that that is pretty stellar. Um, what what do you think Enough is about prob- Bob Smiley? <laughs> <laughs> I I said nothing. I said nothing about him, but uh, now I suppose we have to pay him royalties. Oh, crap. now they're gonna they're gonna. <laughs> they're gonna he will collect too. He will collect too. Yeah, he will. They're gonna ban this video now. Thanks. So, but looking back, uh, what what's your what's your favorite show or or that you that you you have a one that just just stands out as like the the best show the the thing that you kind of look back at and you go man that was great i you know if if i could repeat that show every day i'd live you know forever or what there's got to be I, um there's there's a lot of shows that i remember that i really felt good at and a lot of them were more toward the beginning of of uh my career because i was still it was still new and it was still like something i really wanted to accomplish you know getting the standing ovation or or selling out or something like that and um it's funny because they're all on the heels of other comics other like for instance working with tim hawkins um you know just watching him work and then also going up there and and uh being able to do what I do. It's totally different, and and just be able to stand out. And is one of the things that I really enjoyed is making that crowd laugh. And then there was another time when I got a chance to open for Gabriel Iglesias here in San Antonio at the AT and T Center, which was like a, it's a huge basketball arena where the Spurs play. Yep. And I couldn't thank him enough because I did probably the solid best ten minutes that I I had. Crowd, your home crowd, go crazy before you even, when they mention your name and then just stay with you the whole way and knowing that you made them proud That's despite just have being funny. And that was for probably one of the other ones that, and also I had a, you know, there's a couple of, another one I did uh, at a show for the Hispanic State Fair 
and I had I had a com my friends go before me, and they were all pretty dirty. I'll be honest, and I was the only clean one on the bill, and I was headlining. And uh, I remember I did a show solid. It was a great. I just felt good that night. I just felt I felt everything was you know you know when everything's just hitting, yeah, and you're just bro. like man, this is yep. you, you, you you don't. You could just ad lib and they're going with you, you know, yep. and, and it was just one of those nights. And I remember I had a applause break for thanking God at the end and I got a standing ovation. And I remember the compliment I got was probably one of the best ones. It was this this guy, this he was pretty drunk and he comes up to me <laughs> as I'm going to my merch table and he said, hey, man, I've been waiting for you to say a bad word, eh? <laughs> I, said, uh, I go, yeah. <laughs> I said, yeah, but did but did you laugh? Easy, they've been fast as I peed in my pants. I'm like, yeah, yeah, you did good. And I'm like, well, then I did my job. You know? And that was the best feeling for me was knowing that I could make people laugh that was expecting a dirty show, and then they were they peed in their pants from laughing at my stuff. You know, and Man. that made me feel pretty good. Man, yeah. see, that goes right into the transitioning into this whole thing where. The whole idea of why we created Gutty's Comedy Club was exactly that reason. Um, being able to create a brand that can house clean comedy without it having to be like a special event or a church event or anything like that. We want to raise yeah. the standard on clean comedy so that it becomes a staple. It becomes something where, yeah, it's available. And so when we built this and, and here in Greenwood – has it, the response have been has been crazy before this whole thing, obviously. But my, the whole point of why we created Goodies is because of exactly that, where they're coming in and they're expecting, you know, they're they, they, they're expecting. Okay, it's if it's comedy, if it's stand up comedy, it has to be blue. Now, I love all comedy. Don't get me wrong. It's it, we've we've always said this. I, it's mm -hmm. not that's not the case. The, the thing is what we're our product and what we want to build is that there is so much more to comedy than just trying to single it out to just blue and, and shock value. You know, it's like, it's not about that specific right. thing because there's so much more to it. I mean, this guy enjoyed himself. He got the laughs going, he got all that going. He didn't get one cuss word from you and he got everything that you need when you're, when you're, when it's all about comedy. And so, we want to we want to create the same thing. So when we started doing the same thing, we started getting the same results. People coming in saying, "Man, I didn't even ex expect uh, this to be hilarious." Man, everybody that came to the stage was hilarious, and not one of them cussed. And they didn't they didn't expect that. And we're getting that type of response to. I'm so glad you guys are here because of the fact that we can bring our whole family, or we can not worry about. Um, you know, the material that's being dropped and all that stuff. So um, I'm glad that you that you're a part of it. I'm glad you're you're able to, to and experience that, too. Uh, so it's like it's always going to be that battle between, OK, we're not a real. Uh, it, I say this because of the fact that when I heard it, I was like, this is pretty funny. You, people there was a comment that said we're not a comedy club because we don't cuss. So we're not a real comedy club. So there's no blue material, so you're not huh. technically real. And that will always be something that I'm going to go back to. Okay, what's what what's considered a real comedy club? A-list comedy clubs, right? Where all the big names come in and they drop the F-bond. They just you know do their thing. And they're great at what they're doing. But at the same time, what really makes comedy? Comedy is, is boiled down to a simplest form. You're here to do a job. You make them laugh. You did your job. People are laughing. People are yeah. having a good time. It's That's the bottom line. Whether you are sharing blue material or not, the bottom line is, are you bringing the funny? And so for us, we want to create that product where we're bringing funny, but in a clean way. And it's it's still comedy regardless. So everybody's going to have their opinion. I have, I've never had anybody come up after, you know, I've, I've been in this 20 plus years. And I've never had somebody come up after one of my shows saying, uh, yeah, I'd like my money back because you you didn't swear enough. Yeah. You didn't tell enough dirty yeah, yeah, jokes. Yeah. I want my money back. <laughs> right. It's never happened. Right. You know? right, 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 right. Exactly. So, you so know, and, and as comedians, our job is to as comedians, our job is to take their mind off 
their problems of the day and the yeah. week and so on. And just, yeah. you know, really make them laugh. And it doesn't matter. I mean, to me, it, and let me, let me uh, kind of follow, you know, trace back a little bit, yeah. step back a little bit to, to, so I started out as a dirty comedian. Then I met my wife, who was a Christian woman, and she wasn't having any of that. Let me tell you that right now. <laughs> I, I, was to, I was trying to bring her over. I was trying to. I was trying to bring her over to the dark side, and she was like, "No, nah, she ain't having any of that." So she was like, uh, "So I remember when I asked her we were dating, I said, so what are you looking for in a relationship?'" She's looking. I said, "I'm looking." She goes, "I'm looking for a God fearing Christian man." I said, "Well, I'll help you find him because that wasn't me." But you know, she was beautiful. I was like. I'm not gonna let this one go, and uh, I I got you know I started dating her and so on and little by little you know I I I was raised Catholic I didn't know the the Lord I didn't have a relationship with him I knew of him yeah. I went on the mandatory date Christmas and Easter paid my tithe my five yeah. bucks and yeah. I was out that was how I rolled yeah. and then when I got to know my wife who was at a she went to a non denominational church and that was a whole another level of uh, Christianity yep. for me. And <laughs> it was all brand new. And, and all of a sudden, you know, I was already doing stand up. And, and I remember I wind up quitting comedy because I felt that, you know, this is not probably what God, where he wants me at and so on. So I quit comedy to get right with God. And uh, next you know it, you know, it's kind of like the Lord spoke to my wife saying, you need to show people what he's doing in your life and how he's being a blessing in your life. So now, because I didn't know what I was going to do, but comedy was all I knew. And I was yeah. in like my prime of mm. coming up. And and it's like you, you kind of, uh, all of a sudden things were different. I was looking at things differently. I was looking at comedy with different glasses on. And, and uh, now it was more about, you know, what my wife said, you can't do dirty. You got to do it his way. And I wind up saying, what's that? And she goes, doing it clean. And I said, okay, I can do that, I think. And uh, oh, okay. <laughs> you know it. I was just kind of, I was kind of like, well, let, me, let me see if I can do this. And then again, I became a student, and I became a student of clean comedy. I became a student, and just started studying and started doing mannerisms and doing all this stuff. And now, with that, you know, said I was doing stand-up comedy. And I remember this one guy told me he was at the comedy club, and I would go to certain comedy clubs just to stay sharp, but I would still do stand-up clean. I mean, the same act I would do right now is the same act I do at a bar. It okay. was, I would not change it. It's just, yeah. that ch it's a challenge for myself. And uh, and I wouldn't change it because that's just me now. Right. And, uh, but before I would, you know, get hesitant to, yo, let me just say a few words here. But no, I just stuck to my guns and said, okay, let's make this happen. Mm -hmm. Studied it, practiced it, and rehearsed it. And then I just was like dedicated to making sure that not only was it clean, not only was it, you know, funny, but I wanted to be like, I didn't want my punchlines to be five miles away. I wanted them to be like, when you hit a balloon and then it's coming back down, hit them again. Hit them again. Hit them again. Yeah. Hit them again. And that's just how it started out. And now I find myself getting older and I can barely breathe. I do more <laughs> slow stories. So I'm like, you know, wait a minute. Hold on. I'm not that young pup anymore. So, right. and now it's kind of like, um, you know, what gives me hope is seeing guys like Dangerfield. Bob Hope that were still performing, George yeah. Burns, yeah. you know, that and, and they got up in their age and they're still writing and they're still perfecting it. And it was just that it's just seeing that love of comedy and that and again, it's like I said earlier, if you have a passion for it, I mean it's something you would do for free. I mean, right. I love comedy so much, I would do it for free. I'd be divorced, but I do it for free. You know what I mean? <laughs> and and uh, but at the same time, it's this one guy told me one time. Well, I was I was doing more churches then, and I would come back to the clubs every now and then just to do a set. And he told me, "Why don't you? Why don't you?" He said the same thing. Why don't you perform? Why do you do churches? Why, they're not a real crowd. I said, "Well, I'll tell you what. You give me your comedy club of four hundred sold out, drunk. Give me that crowd, and I'll give you the eight hundred over here at this church that's sober, judging every word that comes out of your mouth." Mm. <laughs> Then you tell me who has the easier gig. Exactly. I the gig. And, and, and sure enough, afterwards, it's like you said, Dennis, it's like you um, you don't, people, when they leave knowing that they forgot all about, they were laughing so hard that they yeah. forgot all about the verbiage. They forgot all about 
hey man, it's like, uh, wait, wait a minute, this is not supposed to be like this. Right. You're good, good to me. Like you just did the Jedi mind trick on him. You're gonna right. laugh at me. You know what I mean? It's, right. You know they don't, they don't see that that, and that's a good testament of us working on our craft. Yep. And that's where. With you. And that's where if if you're doing your job, you should be funny first. Yep. Be yep. funny, and then, no matter what, be funny. I've you never know? blamed the crowd for a bad set, except that one in Tulsa. Other than that, <laughs> well, that was never Tulsa. Blamed. Come on, I mean Tulsa. I've been there. Uh, you know. <laughs> so let me ask you this: uh, What's the best piece of advice somebody's given to you over the years? Oh, it looks like. Did he get? Did he freeze up? Okay, I there think I he am. froze up. There you are. There you are. Let's see if we can get him back here. There? I yeah, hear you. Your video's kind of frozen still, but we hear you. You, you can go ahead and, and answer the question. We yeah. Can hear you. Yeah. There you are. They caught up. <laughs> got to pay. Got we. We got to pay that internet bill, bro. We got to pay that bill, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's still, he's still, uh, there you are. Oh, there you are. You're good. <laughs> you're in. So, I don't know if you I heard mean, the question or not. Before, before we all. Can you hear me? Yeah, you're good. Can you hear us? I, <laughs> this is the part of the show, folks, where uh, technology has been our friend up to this point. Buffering. Buffering. And and everything is uh, because the entire world is uh, <laughs> is shut down for maintenance. Uh, everybody's on their laptops tonight trying to <laughs> trying to try watch to get us. On. Yeah. And, oh, and so the inter we broke the internet. Yeah, with, we did. It, well, actually, we didn't. Uh, <laughs> Cleto broke the, the internet. Yeah, he, he, that's he, he, that's, that's, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. So <laughs> nice. So, <laughs> so uh, right before the uh, the computer froze, before we broke the internet, you you broke the internet. Um, I asked, uh, <laughs> what was the best piece of advice you were given over the years of of doing this? What was the best piece of advice you ever got? I I think the best piece of advice I got was um, never burn any bridges. And uh, the other one was definitely um, separate yourself from everyone else. Ooh, Don't be the same okay. like everybody else. Okay, and, talk uh, about that. Yeah, talk about that. Separate yourself from everybody else. Don't be the same. Yeah, and, and and when like for instance, when when I when I when everyone thought it was crazy for quitting comedy at first, and uh, it was a personal thing for me, and um, you know it's uh, it, it was interesting because. I, I remember hearing, you know, when I came back and I was clean, I was different than all the other Latino comedians at the time okay. Okay. because I was, uh, you know, I would go to, I was, I was just clean and I never was noticing that. And I had a young, I mean, I, I had, I was doing a gig in a matinee at the comedy club and nothing but military families were coming in because we have an air force here, the big, the the basic trainings for the air force here. And then they have their weekend pass and they bring their families to the comedy club for the matinee show. They were outside in the mall barking, come on in free show, free show, yeah. you know, and uh, yeah. we're trying to get them in. And I remember I had a compliment from this nice, sweet elderly Jewish lady. And she comes up to me and I was the only clean comedian on there. And she grabbed me by the shirt, pulled me down. She goes, thank you for being clean for me. And uh. Uh, I was like, well, you're welcome. And that was just, you know, for me, I realized that I started separating myself and I wanted to be not only clean, but I wanted to be hilarious. I wanted to be funny. Yes. I wanted to be, you know, so much like, uh, you know, something different. And, yeah. and for the most part, you know, it's like you can talk about so many different things, but it's how you put it and it's how you present it. And, if they are rolling and they got them grabbing their stomachs at the end of the show, I mean that's pretty that's much it. Uh, what it that's is what, for me. That's the end result, right? You you want to get them to laugh. You want to give them the yeah. opportunity to laugh and give them the that gift, you know, and saying, okay, now here it is. Here here's the you know my jokes to you, and you know enjoy it, and and um, you know 
laugh because it's going to basically make you feel better. It's it's scientific. It's it's biblical. It's everything. You know, when you're out there doing that, you're walking yeah. out of there feeling really good. And and that's, there's nothing like it. There's nothing like it, man. That's great. You know, and you're right. I mean, it's the best feeling ever just to be able to know that, you know, people, um, you know, the one thing I noticed is, is that when, as you get older, I mean, I went, I went to the comedy club not too long ago, and I'm like, when did I become the old guy at the club? You know, <laughs> and uh, I walk in, I walk in, and they're like, the young guys are like doing open mic, and they're like, oh man, Mr. Rodriguez, do you mind checking out my set? Yeah. Mr. Rodriguez. <laughs> oh, I was glad a minute ago, but now I'm Mr. Rodriguez. I'm like, okay. <laughs> and, uh, you know, one guy, one of the, you talk about the, one of the comedians, you know, came up to me and he goes, yeah, um, he goes, Cleto, can you do me a favor and host my DVD, DVD, DVD release party? I said, wait a minute. Host it. Haven't you <laughs> been doing stand-up for like five months? He goes, he goes, yeah, five months. I go, what's your DVD called? My best five? What is this? I have my DVD <laughs> release party in like seven years. Yeah. Like, what? Type what is five. this called, you know? Fire. But everything yeah, yeah, yeah. now is now. You know, I, I, you know what I realized that I, how I knew I was getting older in, in the business is because I just recently found out about how everything is now social media. Mm-hmm. It's not about, yep. I mean, I went to the comedy club and didn't recognize any of the comedians that were coming to town, but they were all YouTube or yep. Facebook or yeah. something sensations. Yep. And that was it. They were bringing seats, putting seats in the, in the building. Here's that's crazy. I was like, "Wow!" I'm, right, and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not hating on that because the thing is, I that, am. That's a, here's the thing. Here's the thing. <laughs> no, there's, right. But here's the thing. There's a lot of pressure there because if you're gonna do that and you're gonna represent you and you're gonna go on there and you want to be quick, you better ha- be ready because if you're if you're gonna push mm-hmm. out there and you and you're saying you got the goods. That's a lot of pressure on you because you're condensing a whole year. You should have like two years under your belt of open mics, unlimited open mics. Like you should be at open every open mic and you should have that are at least polished. But if you're taking your 10 minutes and you're throwing yeah. it on YouTube and you're not ready for the response of what's going to happen. Yeah. That's on you. That's why I, yep. I don't mind technology and us like for right now, we're up here, we're on here. We're able to go and connect with all of our fans. Technology is great. Yes. YouTube's awesome. Facebook's awesome. When it comes to the arts of comedy and, and how we're taking the actual form of it and trying to make it microwavable, quick, 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 fast and easy. That's when it gets scary because you're going to get some really messed up sets you're gonna get some messed up people that are coming out of this and it's harsh when you're up on stage and but at you're the end YouTube- of the day at the end of the day the clubs it, it's if you're putting cheeks in the seats right then then you're, happy. You come on in you know and and that's what the I- that's the thing that irritates me is when it's all about the money yeah. and not about the craft that's it it's the quality that's and, that's and being, that's you know the quality of it. And that's one of the things, you know, when Steve and I opened, uh, when, when Gutty's opened, I said, as long as I'm going to be booking the acts coming into this club, yeah, it's going to be a, about the quality of yeah. the show yeah. and trying to put cheeks in the seats. Yeah. But the quality of the show quality. is first. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and that's always been something that I've always barked out. It's like, look, we got to, yes, you're going to have a some that comics come in, you're going to have an off day. It happens. Off days, off days always happen. And especially on a live show, sometimes it does. And you're going to be like, Oh man, that was a live show. But at the same time, when you're, work- <laughs> <laughs> when you're working towards quality, you know, you, you're going to have yeah. few, far less than those shows. And it's like, it's all about the product that we're pushing out there. We want to have great quality comedy coming through those doors because it's on the line when it comes to, especially when you say we're doing clean comedy, it's all on the line because people are coming in expecting it. They're going to be like, okay, well, if it's clean, then it's not funny. So you got to make, you know, you got to, and every time somebody comes in doing that, they, they leave going, man, this was great, man. That was great. So whether so at they. At the end of the day, at the end of the day, Clinton, I just want you to know 
uh, we expect when you come to Gutty's, you're going to be funny because we've yeah. seen you. We know that. Yeah. So we expect you also. I appreciate to, to, that. I can't, can't wait. wait. I can't wait. We expect yeah. it. Okay, you're going to bring the quality show. Now we just really want you to put cheeks in the seats for us. Exactly. That's just that's. So if you don't bring in the if you don't bring the whole crowd, um, you know, <laughs> it's, we got to it, talk. Right? It's 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 Taco Bell. That's for you. right. Yeah. That's right. There you go. Taco Bell, and we got that's a couch awesome. that turns into you know you can sit on a on a, on a on the iconic red couch you got. So that's, that's where you're gonna be spending the night, man. That's it. Nice. <laughs> so, well, I so love the, I love the premise of the club. I, I really do. I'm glad y'all are doing this. Too. Thank you. So, what's next? What's next for for Cleto? What do you, what's on the the horizon, man? Uh, you know what? I, I actually, you know, I just started um, my own podcast. It's called the Cleto Experience, except it's a little different than your normal com com comedian's podcast. I actually, when I came up with this premise, it was um, kind of wanting to do something a little bit different. It's uh, The premise is it's one comedian and not one, but two trained professional therapists. And uh, and that equals a lot of issues. Let me put that out there. So, uh, it's like comedy meets therapy, everybody. <laughs> it's like... I was real. I remember I, when this came about. I was uh, doing a podcast for their their. Uh, I was a, I was a guest on their podcast, and um, I guess they wanted to analyze me or something that kind of thing because they saw my set and then all of a sudden they're like, "Yeah, we got mommy issues here." I'm like, "What?" You know. So <laughs> I was like, all of a sudden, you know, commitment issues and that kind of thing. So we were. Uh, I said, you know, I've been wanting to do a podcast. I've been praying for it last year, and I was really trying to. Yeah, you know, didn't have the funds for it or whatever. And they had a little studio set up and they said, well, why don't you do it here? And so it became a blessing for me to do it here. And then I thought about, you know, I just didn't want it to be all about comedy. I wanted to actually see if we can help folks that are going through some stuff and, you know, whether it's anxiety or loneliness or depression. And a lot that you know, came to my mind was Robin Williams. Okay. You know, I mean, everybody, you know, just saw the, the, the talent and the gift and, Nobody knew behind closed doors what was going on. And I think a lot of people today, whether it be comics, musicians, or actors, or whoever, have that going on as, on top of just everyday people that you know are stressing on a daily basis. And I wanted these therapists to kind of give them some answers to whatever they may be going through or questions they may have. And at the same time, I'll bring the funny and the humor release when it's time. But some, issues, some days we have uh, episodes we have really funny guests and we just find that it's just all about laughter and in some it's just it's not it's just about you know being real and and helping folks and uh right now if you go it's it's a website www.thecletholexperience.com and if you go there you can check out some of, and also on our facebook page you can see some of the clips that we have on we've done i already believe fours in the in the bag right now and uh it's going really good i love it i love uh the girls, the therapist, Tammy and Lo, uh, Lawanda, um, they're uh, <laughs> my co-hosts. And again, yeah. they, they uh, analyze me all the time. And I take everybody as who wants to be part of this. And and as soon as, and again, I love to have you guys on as soon as we get the <laughs> capability to go ahead and do it, you know, uh, through um, through uh, the circuit board over there that they have, the tele then we can call in and get call-ins and stuff. So we're kind of excited about what's on the horizon, but that right now, Seems to be it. Um, coming off of uh, a dry bar comedy special I did last year, uh, and uh, that's going really well. If you want to tune into that, you know, drybarcomedy.com uh, backslash Glethel. Yep. And uh, then I'm also working again, again, I read. Huh? No, that's great. That's good that uh, you have that connection with dry bar too, as well. That's awesome. Yeah, it was really cool. I, I got that through my buddy uh, Dennis Gaxiola. I don't know if you know Dennis, but we know, he's hilarious, man. He's uh, you gotta have him on. The show. We just we Did just you? had yeah, him. He's, he's hilarious. We just had him here on the show, but we showed a clip of his and uh, stars who produced that clip. Basically, as soon as it was, it they saw that they you know their copyrighted thing was on our. They shut down the show, oh, yeah. so we have to get Dennis back. So we can have them on again because yeah. you can't you can't actually see the fact you go to uh, if you go to Gutty's TV uh, on YouTube and you want to watch his episode, 
you don't get to see it because because they they jacked us up against the wall. Yeah, and Dennis has hot cables, so you know you don't want to get him in trouble. <laughs> oh, all I know is the old guy that was supposed to uh, take care of all of that stuff. Uh, Tired. He's he's uh, <laughs> he's been uh, hanging out at the nursing homes way too much, evidently. Because <laughs> blame that coronavirus. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Right now, right. I'm doing. Oh well, you know. So, <laughs> so you got good. you got your the Cleto experience. That's yeah. that's going well for you. Any anything else? Uh, yeah, you know, going really well. You got you, and you're still um, doing the. How long? Know, I mean, you got the whole thing going on with the TV station, though, too. I mean, you're doing the Where's Cleto, uh, and uh, yeah, I'm doing the I'm doing the uh, Where's Cleto, and uh, that's going really well. I just re. Uh, Sign my contract to do another two years there. I'm going on. That should be ten years now. And uh, I'm again. You can see I do. I do a right for the COVID nineteen whole deal. For the folks at home, I'm doing a little stand up, a little kind of q and A Q&A with. Uh, uh, if you go to News Four SA uh, News Four SA dot com or Fox San Antonio dot com, then you can see my commentary. It's called Cletho's Commentary: Spreading the Laughter, Not the Germs, and. Uh, <laughs> And we went with that one because the woo ha ha they didn't they didn't like that one uh, <laughs> they didn't go for that one so that was kind of not gonna happen there so yeah my friends were telling me about that one I was like yeah I don't think they're gonna go for that so but uh, yeah there was a lot of, there was a lot to go what do you want to name your commentary well I don't know how about thanks China but you know that they weren't gonna <laughs> go for that one either so I said. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well. you know, it's just kind of. Uh, I said, no, I can't do that. Not, you know, so it would. In the meantime, it, uh, you know, I've been doing a lot of writing and just kind of uh, can't wait to hit the stage. I can't wait till all this is over with and we can get back to some kind of normalcy. And I know it's got to be done, but you know, it's, uh, we hang in there together. So we'll get through it. We'll make it through, man. It's it's gonna happen. And when we bounce back, it's gonna be great. It's gonna be better, for sure. And once we get all that taken care of, you know we're going to be uh, hitting you up to say, "Hey, it's time for you to uh, come and and fill the seats uh, at Guddy's Comedy Club." So let's have some fun, man. Yeah, man. There you go. Yeah, we'll send I'm it hoping up. that my YouTube will be viral by then. <laughs> <laughs> you better be ready, bro. You better be ready. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm over here doing TikTok like crazy. I don't know how much they made. <laughs> <laughs> That's so true, man. TikTok has been like blowing up, man. man. Everybody's all up in that stuff. Have, there's, a little, there's a little kid that is making like I think he gets twenty grand every month. I'm like, are you kidding me? That's are you kidding me? I'm That's like, so come wrong. on. I said, I told my daughter, you know, play a song. I'm gonna dance to it. Let's go. Come on. Let's do this. That? Car wash. Let's go. Exactly. Let's make some money. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. Come on, man. That's uh, awesome, man. Yeah. That's dope. That's great, man. Well, I think it'll be awesome. Yeah. If, uh, if Steve, you got any other questions you have for? for I actually wanted to just you know step away from comedy real quick, and I just wanted to uh, just talk about. I, I found out today that um, as we were learning a little bit more about you, that you had a grandfather that is uh, was in the, that got the Medal of Honor too as well. Um, yes. And so mm -hmm. that that was cool, and what the reason why I'm, I'm bringing that up is because we. Also uh, donate tickets to vet ticks and we always have, you know, veterans come through to the club for free and they always have a great time. And so oh, when cool. I saw that, man, I appreciate the, the the fact that you have family that has been in the service. So we appreciate that, too, as well. And uh, that's a that's a high honor, too. So I'm, I'm oh, sure you're you. pretty proud. Yeah. So thank you for that. Yeah, my my grandfather, he was one of the first Mexican-Americans to get the Congressional Medal of Honor and he wound up being like a. Uh, one medal less than Audie Murphy, and wow, dude, uh, awesome. he wound up killing. He wound up killing eighty-eight Japanese by himself. Um, his friend got sniped in the beginning of it, and uh, he stashed him and took his ammunition and kept going. Wow. And uh, they wow. both received the Medal of Honor. And uh, had they not done that, they would have been ambushed right where their platoon was sitting at five and four o'clock in the morning. So they yeah. went like around one in the morning. And uh, my grandfather, you know, he just. Um, it was interesting. I was telling this story earlier to one of the gentlemen I was, I was uh, working with at the live shot, 
And because he, he had family that he had a uncle that served for his brothers on the mm. different tours, which mm. I thought was really cool. And he lived to talk about it, which was awesome. So his brothers didn't have to go. So he went and um, I didn't even know you could do that, but he did. And uh, I was telling about my grandfather that here you had a man that was 17 years old, lied about his age to get in the army. And he was an orphan. He was living with his aunt and he was raised just fighting, just full of anger, you know, mm. because he didn't have his folks and family and so on. And uh, he had my his grandmother, you know, told him she used to ride with Pancho Villa's army. Yo. So wow. she told him, she told him, bring me back the ears of the Japanese. Wow. Now, wow. Uh, my grandmother would tell me, mijo, don't get hurt. Don't be crazy. <laughs> don't get out there. Exactly. His grandmother said, bring back the ears of the Japanese. And he did. <laughs> he wound wow. up, he bought two ears in a bottle of uh, I forgot what he had in there. What, I don't, it was, uh, was it formaldehyde? Uh, yeah, that's it. And he had that in there with the, ear, the ears in there. And he brought it to her. She looked at it. He said, he, she looked at it, put it down, and gave him the shotgun Pancho Villa gave her. Come on, as a gift. dude. Wow. That is crazy. Yeah, what a story, crazy. dude. For her to say, go get the <laughs> ears, dude. That's insane. And he go went and did ears, it. I mean, and he did it, and yo. And not only that's... that, but he told my he, he told my grandmother when they were dating. She said he told her that I'm gonna leave tomorrow, but I'm gonna come back. I'm gonna come back with a lot of medals. And she goes, "Just come back alive. That's all I care about." And yeah. he laughed, and he didn't realize he was gonna come back with the most prestigious medal of them all. Ooh, and uh, I remember I ran into. Uh, I wish I was telling a friend of mine that I wish I had back then. When I was 19, 18 years old, I remember I was at my grandmother's house and I was there late. I can't remember for what. And my grandfather just got in and he's with three of his buddies that are also Medal of Honor winners. Mm. Jose Lopez, uh, 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 Lucian Adams, and um, what the other guys, uh, uh, Benavides, Roy Benavides. And these guys all come in and, and they're, they're wearing their medals. And I wish I would have had a camera to take Dude. a picture of these four metal vinyl sitting around the table. And my grandfather is asking my grandmother to make them huevos and acheros with <laughs> tortillas and yeah. home food at 10 o'clock at night. They're just smoking, you know, talking. And she's making homemade tortillas, you know. And, and there, there they are, you know, having a feast. And I'm like, Grandpa, didn't you just eat right now? Yeah, but they had, like, chicken and yeah. macaroni. We want, you know, what was on channel? Real stuff. So they wanted yeah. breakfast. So <laughs> I, I remember the uh, a real quick story. I remember they went to the White House because it was Hispanic Heritage Month, and they were going to honor the Hispanic Medal of Honor winners. And Roy Benavides was I was at an event, and he told me this story. He said, "You know, I have the most respect for your grandfather to the point where if anybody did anything to him, I would be in jail. Period. Done. Because he was like respect. our leader." And one time, your grandfather, we were at the White House, and he goes, man, mijo, it was open bar. I'm getting all, shh, 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 and I want to fight everybody. I'm like, causing, I'm, I'm picking on everybody, and I don't care. I'm talking loud. And, and your grandfather took me to the hallway, got me by my uniform, picked me up, and threw me up against the wall and said, don't you dare embarrass us here. And I looked at him, and he goes, I looked at him, and I just said, you got it, big brother. You got it. And he he put he didn't drink anything else but water the rest of the night. Mm -hmm. And I said, but yeah, but you were younger. You could have took him. He goes, son. He goes, mijo, when you when you kill 88 Japanese by yourself, there's something not right. You don't need him to trigger off. <laughs> <You don't need that. laughs> uh -uh. Don't do that. Yeah, I just, uh -uh. I said, you got it, big brother. You got it. So I didn't need him to snap right in front of me. So I said, you got it. And I said, wow, right. that's pretty cool. That was good respect. Dude, I just, it, you don't hear stuff like that, man, nowadays, man. It's just, there's so much that has gone on as far as just the history of how things have just evolved. And you, you just don't hear stories like that anymore. And it's just really rich to, to hear that, man. It's cool. I'm glad, man. And thank you for sharing that story, man. That's dope. Well, I appreciate, appreciate that, you bringing it up. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, no, no doubt, no doubt. Appreciate it, man.
Well, Clayton, we want to thank you for taking some time and hanging out with us here on the yeah. Pop and the Rican Show. Uh, it's been a pleasure to Pop listen and, and hear a little bit about your process and your comedy and, and a little bit about your family heritage. And uh, that's, I mean, that's an amazing story. And, and you can be proud of the heritage you have, you know. Yeah. So it's good stuff, man. Appreciate well, it. Appreciate man. it. Yeah, they have, a, they, have a, they, have a, they have a freeway here named after him. Uh, like Letha Rodriguez Freeway in San Antonio. I got a bus stop in the south side with my name on it. Nothing legit, just Sharpie. <laughs> Letha was here. It was a long way. But, you know. <laughs> Thanks a lot, guys. Thanks for having me. Y'all have a good one. All right. Take care. Man, have a great one. Take it easy, Thanks, bro. Cleto. Stay safe, bro. You got it. And that was great. Oh, man. That was great, man. Another great interview on there, man. I appreciate that. Appreciate Cleto and everybody that's – uh that has been uh, a part of the Pops and Rican show. Um, again, you can go online, check us out online, and drop uh, the app in, on your phone. Go to, you know, download the app. The mobile app is on Google Play, also the App Store. You can um, help us out. You can donate as well as buy merch, as well as support us as we're going through this process here, the quarantine. Um, and just this process of what we're, where we're at right now, we just hope that this interview was able to give you some encouragement. If you're a performer, if you're an artist, or if you're just, just an everyday guy that loves to laugh and hang out and talk, that that's what it felt like. It felt like he was just another brother that came yeah. through, yeah. hung out with us as always, and, uh, was able to just come in with some stories and we were able to kick it. And I like, I like that. I like that setup. That feels so. Good. So get on and uh, wherever the I, – I don't know where that thing you is. Don't, that, you don't where, need – yeah. There where, you go. Wherever there. The, the subscribe button is. <laughs> <You> just, just, <laughs> I'm just going to keep poking until I hit subscribe, it. Click subscribe, man. Yeah. Hit the subscribe and button and, yeah. uh, and make sure you uh, are updated. Right next to the subscribe button, there's like this little bell. And if you hit that, it notifies you when we have a new episode. And so you get to see it. And uh, so – Please uh, invite your friends, invite your family to uh, subscribe. Tell the complete strangers they should subscribe. Yeah. And uh, because uh, we're going to continue doing this, even once the club reopens. Even when it goes, yeah. This is we're going to still be doing club. shows just like this where we're interviewing comics and, and folks from around the, the country. And uh, so, man, it was a great time to, to hang out. I learned stuff about Cleto tonight that I didn't know. I've known him for years, and I didn't know all those things. So That's really cool, man, and that's what I love about it is that yeah. every single time we're living out of here with something new, and so I had a great time, man. So yeah. it was great. Yeah. Well, I guess that uh, there's nothing else for us to do. I can go ahead and say uh, this has been the Pops and the Rican Show, and uh, I'm still Pops. And I'm the Rican. And this has been the Pops, Pops and the Rican, Rican Show. show. Pops in the Rican. Pops in the Rican. Pops in the Rican. Pops in the Rican. Pops and the Rican. Pops and the Rican. <laughs> <laughs>